Page, Morgan's been in an accident. Grant's voice trembled with fear as he clutched his phone. My heart sank as I turned away from the mirror, the shimmering wedding dress draping my body suddenly feeling like a cage. It was supposed to be the happiest day of our lives, a celebration of love and commitment. But in that moment, everything changed. Grant's sister, Morgan, had been rushed to the hospital, and the news shattered the joyful anticipation that had filled my bohemian-style department just moments earlier. As Grant hung up the call, his expression morphed from panic to a haunting determination. I need to go to her, he said, his words laced with an urgency that sent a chill down my spine. I searched his eyes for reassurance, but all I found was a deep, unsettling void. But the wedding? I stammered, grasping at the threads of our once-perfect plan. Grant's jaw clenched as he shook his head. I'm sorry, Paige. I have to be there for Morgan. We'll have to postpone everything. With those words he turned and rushed out the door, leaving me standing amidst the delicate lace and satin, tears welling in my eyes. It was as if the universe itself had conspired to unravel the dream we had so carefully woven. As the hours ticked by, with no word from Grant, a gnawing suspicion began to take root. His behavior had been changing over the past few weeks, his attention constantly drawn to Morgan's well-being, even during our most intimate moments. Desperate for answers, I reached for my phone and dialed Kevin, my best friend and boss, at the vinyl record store where I worked. Kev, something's not right, I confided, my voice trembling with uncertainty. Kevin's calming presence offered solace, but it couldn't quell the nagging feeling that Grant's sudden departure was more than just a family emergency. Little did I know, this was only the beginning of a whirlwind of betrayal and deceit that would test the very limits of my resilience. The days after Grant's abrupt departure blurred together in a haze of confusion and heartache. I tried to lose myself in the rhythmic melodies of the vinyl records at work, but Kevin's concerned glances only magnified the doubts gnawing at my soul. He's been acting strange lately, I confided in Kevin one afternoon, my fingers tracing the grooves of a well-worn album cover. It's like he's a completely different person. Kevin's brow furrowed as he leaned against the counter. Have you tried talking to him about it? I shook my head, my lips pressed into a tight line. Every time I bring it up, he brushes me off or changes the subject. As the weeks passed, Grant's behavior grew increasingly erratic. He would come home late, his eyes glazed over, and his phone constantly buzzing with messages he refused to share. The once-loving fiancé I had adored was slowly slipping away, replaced by a stranger consumed by a dark obsession with his sister's well-being. One night, as Grant tossed and turned beside me, his phone lit up with a flurry of notifications. Against my better judgment, I reached for it, my heart pounding in my chest. What I saw made my blood run cold, a string of intimate messages between Grant and a woman named Alicia. Who's she talking about? Alicia's message read, Your sister or your fiancé? Grant's reply was swift and chilling. Both. They're both wrapped around my finger. I recoiled in horror, my mind racing with a thousand unanswered questions. Was Grant having an affair? Was Morgan involved in some twisted way? The certainty I had once felt about our relationship crumbled like a house of cards. In the days that followed, I became consumed by a burning desire to uncover the truth. I scoured Grant's emails and bank statements, piecing together a trail of financial discrepancies, lavish gifts, secret purchases, and unexplained wire transfers. He's been playing us both, I confessed to Kevin, my voice trembling with a mixture of anger and betrayal. I need to stop him before he ruins everything. Kevin's eyes widened, but he nodded solemnly. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. With Kevin's support, I began to collect evidence, screenshots, receipts, and damning messages, building a case against Grant's deceit. Each new discovery fueled the fire within me, transforming my pain into a burning determination for revenge. As the wedding date loomed closer, Grant's behavior became increasingly unhinged. He would disappear for hours, only to return with flimsy excuses and a haunted look in his eyes. It was as if he were a puppet, dancing to the tune of some unseen force. Finally, the night before our wedding, Grant announced he had to meet a business associate for an urgent matter. I knew in my gut that this was no ordinary meeting. Without hesitation, I followed him, tracking his movements through the city until he arrived at a secluded hotel. 
and there, in the dimly lit parking lot, I witnessed the ultimate betrayal, Grant embracing Alicia, whispering promises of a future together, away from the lies and deception that had consumed our lives. As I watched them from the shadows, a cold resolve washed over me. Grant had sealed his fate, and now it was my turn to make him pay. In the aftermath of witnessing Grant's ultimate betrayal, a fire ignited within me, fueling my determination to unravel the twisted web of deceit he had woven. No longer would I be the naive, trusting fiancé blinded by love. It was time to fight back. The next morning, as Grant emerged from the bedroom, his hair disheveled and his eyes heavy with guilt, I confronted him head-on. So how was your business meeting last night? I spat, my words laced with venom. Grant froze, his face drained of color. Paige, I can explain. Save it, I cut him off, my hands trembling with rage. I saw you with Alicia. How long has this been going on? For a moment, Grant remained silent, his gaze fixed on the floor. Then, with a resigned sigh, he lifted his eyes to meet mine. Longer than you think. As the sordid details spilled from his lips, a sickening realization dawned upon me. Alicia had been manipulating both Grant and his sister, Morgan, for years. She had wormed her way into their lives, exploiting their vulnerabilities and driving a wedge between them, all for her own twisted gain. She's been playing us all, Grant admitted, his voice thick with shame. I was too blind to see it. But as the truth unraveled, it became clear that Grant's hands were far from clean. He had been funneling money to Alicia, showering her with expensive gifts and indulging her every whim, all while lying to me about our financial situation. How could you do this to me? I cried, hot tears streaming down my cheeks. After everything we've been through together? Grant's shoulders slumped, his eyes filled with remorse. I'm sorry, Paige. I never meant for it to go this far. But his apologies rang hollow, a feeble attempt to assuage the pain he had inflicted. In that moment, I realized that the man I had once loved was nothing more than a shadow, a puppet dancing to Alicia's twisted tune. As the days ticked by, the wedding preparations continued, a cruel charade that only served to fuel my simmering rage. Grant tried to make amends, uh, offering empty promises and half-hearted gestures, but I had seen the truth in his actions, and there was no turning back. You need to cancel everything, I told him one night, my voice steely with resolve. This wedding is a lie, and I won't be a part of it. Grant's eyes widened, pleading with me to reconsider. Paige, please, let's talk about this. But my mind was made up. Do whatever you want. Just cancel everything. It's over. As I uttered those words, a weight lifted from my shoulders, replaced by a burning determination to make Grant and Alicia pay for their betrayal. No longer would I be the victim. It was time to take control and enact my revenge. In the days leading up to the wedding, I meticulously gathered evidence, compiling a dossier of their misdeeds, financial records, incriminating messages, and even surveillance footage that captured their illicit encounters. With each new piece of damning proof, my resolve hardened, and a plan began to take shape. On the eve of what should have been our wedding day, I made a silent vow. Grant and Alicia would face the consequences of their actions, and I would be the one to deliver the ultimate payback. With Grant's confession and the revelations about Alicia's manipulative schemes, a fire ignited within me, a burning desire for justice that would not be extinguished until I exposed their betrayal and made them pay for their actions. I became a woman possessed, scouring every nook and cranny for evidence of their deceit. Bank statements, credit card bills, even Grant's hidden stash of burner phones. Nothing was off-limits in my quest for the truth. And with each new discovery, the picture became clearer. Grant had been funneling money to Alicia for years, lavishing her with extravagant gifts and vacations, all while lying to me about our finances. The depth of his deception was staggering, and yet he had the audacity to beg for my forgiveness. Page, please, let me make it up to you he pleaded one evening as I poured over a stack of incriminating receipts. It was all Alicia's doing. She manipulated me. I scoffed, my fingers tightening around the damning evidence. Save it, Grant. I'm done with your lies. His eyes widened, panic setting in as he realized the gravity of the situation. What are you going to do? A twisted smile crept across my lips. Oh, you'll see. In the days that followed, I became a master of subterfuge shadowing Grant's every move and documenting his clandestine meetings with Alicia. 
I captured them in their most intimate moments, their lips locked in passionate embraces, their bodies intertwined in a twisted dance of betrayal. And as the evidence mounted, a plan began to take shape, a grand scheme to expose their duplicity and bring their house of cards crashing down around them. I have everything I need, I confided in Kevin one night, spreading the damning photographs and financial records across the counter of the vinyl store. It's time to make my move. Kevin's eyes widened as he took in the sheer magnitude of Grant and Alicia's deception. Page, this is... He trailed off, shaking his head in disbelief. I know, I replied, my voice steely with resolve. And they're going to pay for what they've done. As the days ticked down to what should have been our wedding, the tension mounted. Grant grew increasingly agitated, sensing that the noose was tightening around his neck. But still, he clung to the delusion that he could salvage our relationship, that his empty promises and hollow apologies would be enough to make me forget his transgressions. Page, I'm begging you, he pleaded one night, his eyes shining with unshed tears. Don't do anything rash. Think about what you're risking. But his words fell on deaf ears. I had already made up my mind. There would be no turning back, no second chances. Grant and Alicia had sealed their fate, and now they would face the consequences of their actions. On the eve of our scheduled wedding day, I made the final preparations, gathering the evidence and steeling myself for the confrontation to come. As I looked in the mirror, the reflection staring back at me was one of a woman transformed, a woman who had endured the ultimate betrayal and emerged stronger, more determined than ever before. And as the sun rose on what should have been the happiest day of my life, I knew that this was no longer about love or commitment, this was about revenge, pure and simple, and Grant and Alicia were about to learn the true cost of their deceit. The day before our supposed wedding, the air was thick with tension. Grant tried his best to act nonchalant, but I could see the guilt etched on his face every time he looked at me. As I busied myself with last-minute preparations, he approached me hesitantly. "'Page, I have to meet with a business associate tonight,' he said, avoiding my gaze. I fought back a bitter laugh. A business associate? Or is it Alicia? Grant's eyes widened, and he opened his mouth to speak, but I held up a hand to silence him. Save it, Grant. I'm done with your lies. I turned away, my anger simmering just beneath the surface. He reached out, his fingers grazing my arm. Page, please, it's not what you think. I jerked away from his touch, whirling around to face him. Then what is it, Grant? Because from where I'm standing, it looks like you've been betraying me for months, maybe even years. His shoulders slumped and he let out a defeated sigh. You're right. I've made mistakes, terrible mistakes, but I swear I never meant to hurt you. Well, you did, I spat, my eyes burning with unshed tears. And now it's time to face the consequences. As he opened his mouth to protest, I held up a hand, silencing him once more. Just go, Grant. Go meet your precious Alicia. But know this, whatever happens next, it's on you. With that, I turned on my heel and stormed out of the apartment, leaving him standing there, a pathetic shell of the man I once loved. As I stepped out into the crisp evening air, a newfound sense of determination washed over me. I knew what I had to do. I had to catch, catch Grant and Alicia in the act, to expose their betrayal in the most public, humiliating way possible. With trembling hands, I pulled out my phone and called Kevin. "'Kev, I need your help,' I said, my voice barely above a whisper. There was a pause on the other end of the line, and then Kevin's familiar voice cut through the silence. Anything, Paige. What do you need? I took a deep breath, stealing myself for what was to come. I'm going to follow Grant tonight. I need you to be ready with the evidence, everything we've collected. Kevin didn't hesitate. I'm on it. Just say the word, and I'll be there. As I ended the call, a sense of calm settled over me. This was it. The moment I had been waiting for the chance to make Grant and Alicia pay for their deceit. I tailed Grant from a safe distance, my heart pounding in my chest as he made his way to a secluded hotel on the outskirts of town. Sure enough, there she was, Alicia, waiting for him in the dimly lit parking lot, her arms outstretched in an embrace that made my stomach churn. I watched my fingers tightening around my phone as they disappeared into the hotel, their laughter echoing through the night like a twisted mockery of the love we once shared. And in that moment, I knew what I had to do. 
With a few taps on my screen, I sent a message to Kevin, the weight of my decision settling heavily on my shoulders. It's time. Bring everything you've got. We're going to stop this wedding once and for all. The grand wedding venue was a vision of elegance, with delicate flower arrangements adorning every surface and soft music filling the air. But as I stood there, surrounded by the trappings of what should have been the happiest day of my life, all I could feel was a burning rage. Grant fidgeted nervously beside me, his face pale and his hands trembling. Page, please, he whispered, his voice strained. Let's just call this whole thing off. We can start over, I swear. I turned to him, my eyes blazing with fury. Start over? I scoffed. After everything you've done? After all the lies and betrayal? He opened his mouth to respond, but I held up a hand, silencing him. In that moment, the sounds of the arriving guests faded into the background, and all I could hear was the pounding of my own heart. As the ceremony began, I stood there, frozen in place, my mind racing with a thousand different emotions. Part of me wanted to run to flee from this twisted charade and leave Grant and his web of deceit behind, but a stronger force kept me rooted to the spot, the burning desire for justice, for vengeance. And then, as the officiant began to speak, I saw him, Kevin, slipping through the crowd like a silent guardian angel, a flash drive clutched in his hand. Our eyes met, and he gave a subtle nod, a silent confirmation that the moment had arrived. Without warning, I stepped forward, my voice cutting through the hushed silence like a knife. Stop! I shouted, drawing all eyes towards me. This wedding can't go on. Grant's face drained of color as he turned to face me, his eyes wide with panic. Paige, what are you doing? But I didn't falter, my gaze fixed on the crowd before me. This man, I declared, gesturing towards Grant, has been lying to all of us. He's been carrying on an affair, betraying me in the worst possible way. A collective gasp rippled through the guests, and I could see the shock and disbelief etched on their faces. But I wasn't done yet. Not only that, I continued, my voice rising with each word, but he's been funneling money, our money, to his mistress. He's been living a double life, playing us all for fools. Grant's mouth opened and closed like a fish out of water, but no words came out. He was trapped, caught in the web of his own lies. Don't believe me? I turned to Kevin, who stepped forward, holding up the flash drive. I have proof. Financial records, text messages, even surveillance footage of Grant and his mistress together. With a few clicks, the damning evidence began to play on the large screens flanking the altar, leaving no doubt as to the depth of Grant's betrayal. The room erupted into chaos, with guests shouting and hurling accusations at the man who was supposed to be my husband. But through it all, I stood tall, my chin raised defiantly, reveling in the sweet taste of revenge. Grant turned to me, his eyes pleading, Page, please, I can explain. But I cut him off with a cold, bitter laugh. Explain? What's there to explain, Grant? You've been lying to me from the start. You never loved me. I was just a means to an end, another pawn in your twisted game. As the words left my lips, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders, a burden I had been carrying for far too long. In that moment, I was free, free from the shackles of Grant's deceit, free to reclaim my life and my dignity. And as the guests began to disperse, murmuring their disbelief and disgust, I turned to Grant one last time, my eyes alight with a newfound strength. It's over, I said, my voice unwavering. You've lost everything, your money, your reputation, and any chance you ever had at happiness with me. This is the end, Grant, the end of your lies and the beginning of my new life. With those words, I turned and walked away, leaving Grant standing alone in the ruins of his own making, a broken man brought to his knees by the weight of his own betrayal. In the aftermath of the disastrous wedding, the world seemed to shift on its axis. As the dust settled and the initial shock wore off, a new reality began to take shape, one where Grant's web of lies lay in tatters, exposed for all to see. I retreated to the safety of my family home, seeking solace in the warm embrace of my parents. Their eyes shone with a mixture of pride and sorrow as they held me close, whispering words of comfort and reassurance. "'You did the right thing, sweetheart,' my father murmured, his voice thick with emotion. "'That snake got what was coming to him.' My mother nodded, her hand gently stroking my hair. "'We're here for you, Paige. Always.' Their unwavering support was a balm to my wounded soul, 
a reminder that even in the darkest of times, love and family could prevail. As the days passed, the fallout from the wedding disaster continued to ripple through our lives. Grant's parents, once so proud and aloof, were forced to confront the harsh reality of their son's betrayal. I'll never forget the look on his mother's face when she showed up at my doorstep, her usual composure cracked, and her eyes rimmed with tears. Paige, she choked out, her voice trembling. I'm so sorry, we had no idea. I stood there uncertain of how to respond. This was the woman who had once looked down on me, who had deemed me unworthy of her precious son, and yet in that moment all I could see was a broken mother, her world shattered by the actions of the child she had trusted. He's lost everything, she continued, her words tumbling out in a torrent of grief, his job, his money, his future, all because of that wretched woman he was seeing. I nodded, my own anger simmering just beneath the surface. Alicia. I spat out the name like a curse. She was the one pulling the strings all along. Mrs. Grant's eyes widened and she clutched at my arm, her nails digging into my skin. You know about her? Tell me everything, Paige. I need to know the truth. And so I did. I laid it all out, the financial records, the incriminating text messages, the sordid details of Grant and Alicia's twisted affair. With each new revelation, Mrs. Grant's face grew paler, her carefully cultivated poise crumbling into dust. By the time I finished, she was a shell of her former self, her eyes hollow and her shoulders slumped in defeat. My son, she whispered, her voice barely audible. What have I done to deserve this? In that moment, I felt a pang of pity for this once formidable woman. She had been betrayed, not just by her son, but by the very foundations of the life she had built. But pity quickly gave way to resolve as I turned my attention to the next phase of my plan. With Grant's life in ruins and his family reeling from the fallout, it was time to deal with the true architect of this tragedy, Alicia. I tracked her down to a seedy motel on the outskirts of town, her once polished veneer cracked and faded. When she opened the door and saw me standing there, her eyes widened with a mixture of fear and defiance. Well, well, she sneered, her lips curling into a twisted smirk. If it isn't the jilted bride herself, I didn't flinch, my gaze steady and unwavering. It's over, Alicia. Your little game is up. She scoffed, tossing her head back in a mockery of nonchalance. Game? I don't know what you're talking about but I wasn't buying her act. Not anymore. With a flick of my wrist, I produced the damning evidence, a trail of financial records and incriminating photos that left no room for doubt. Alicia's bravado faltered as she flipped through the pages, her eyes growing wider with each passing moment. How? She stammered, her voice catching in her throat. It doesn't matter how, I cut her off, my voice cold and unyielding. What matters is that you're finished, You've lost your hold over Grant, and now you're nothing but a pathetic, broken shell of a woman. For a moment she stared at me, her eyes burning with a mixture of rage and fear. Then, without warning, she crumpled to the floor, her body racked with sobs. You don't understand, she wailed, her words punctuated by ragged gasps. I had to do it. He was my only chance at a better life. I felt a twinge of pity, but it was quickly overwhelmed by a wave of disgust. This woman had torn my life apart, all in pursuit of her own selfish desires. Save it, I spat, turning my back on her pitiful form. You made your choices, and now you have to live with the consequences. As I walked away, I could hear her cries echoing down the dingy hallway, a haunting reminder of the depths to which some people will sink in pursuit of their twisted ambitions. But I didn't look back. Not this time. My path lay ahead a road paved with the ashes of Grant and Alicia's deceit, and I was determined to forge a new life from the rubble of their betrayal. In the weeks that followed my confrontation with Alicia, a strange sense of calm washed over me. It was as if a weight had been lifted, a burden I had been carrying for far too long finally cast aside. As I wandered the familiar streets of my hometown, I found myself drawn to the places that had once brought me solace— the cozy vinyl store where I had spent countless hours losing myself in the rhythmic grooves of old records, the quaint coffee shop where Kevin and I would swap stories and dreams. It was in these places that I began to find myself again, to rediscover the parts of me that had been buried beneath the debris of Grant and Alicia's betrayal. Kevin was there, as he had always been, a steadfast presence in my life. 
We would sit for hours, sipping our drinks and discussing the events that had turned our world upside down. I still can't believe it, he would say, shaking his head in disbelief. How could he do that to you? I would simply shrug, the anger that had once consumed me replaced by a weary acceptance. It doesn't matter now, I would reply. He's the one who has to live with the consequences of his actions. And indeed, the consequences for Grant were swift and severe. His once promising career lay in tatters, his financial empire crumbling under the weight of his deception. Even his own family had turned their backs on him, unable to reconcile the man they thought they knew with the monster he had become. As for Alicia, she had simply vanished. Her grand schemes and manipulations reduced to nothing more than a cautionary tale of greed and hubris. In the midst of it all, I found solace in the familiar rhythm of my life, the comforting melodies of the vinyl store, the warmth of my parents' embrace, the unwavering support of friends like Kevin. It was in these moments that I realized the true strength of the bonds that had been forged through this ordeal. While Grant and Alicia had sought to tear me down, to strip me of my dignity and self-worth, they had ultimately failed. For, in their wake, I had discovered a resilience within myself that I never knew existed. A determination to rise above the ashes of their betrayal and forge a new path, one that was true to my own desires and ambitions. And so, with a newfound sense of purpose, I set about rebuilding my life. I poured my heart and soul into the vinyl store, curating a collection that celebrated the raw emotions and unvarnished truth that had been so lacking in my relationship with Grant. Slowly but surely, the store became a sanctuary, a gathering place for kindred spirits who sought refuge in the timeless melodies of bygone eras. And through it all, Kevin was by my side, a constant source of support and encouragement. You're doing amazing things, Paige, he would say, his eyes shining with pride. This place, it's a reflection of who you really are. And he was right. In the process of rebuilding, I had rediscovered the parts of myself that had been lost. The dreamer, the artist, the seeker of truth and beauty. As the months passed, I found myself letting go of the anger and bitterness that had once consumed me. In their place, a newfound sense of peace took root, a quiet understanding that the path ahead was mine to forge, free from the shackles of Grant and Alicia's deceit. And in those quiet moments, as the warm crackle of vinyl filled the air and the familiar melodies washed over me, I would smile to myself, secure in the knowledge that I had emerged from the ashes of betrayal, stronger and more resilient than ever before. For in the end, it was not Grant or Alicia who had triumphed, but the indomitable human spirit, the ability to rise above the darkness and forge a new path, one step at a time, towards the light of a brighter tomorrow. <laughs>